Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, we got another episode of Fire Emblem Path of Radiance here, and uh, sit back and relax because this is gonna be a long one. So here we go. This is gonna be like Path of Radiance marathon. This one, uh, Chapter 17, is a lengthy one. Uh, so let's see what uh, what we have here at Phonesis Hall. Um. Is that it? Wait, there's more. It seems that Prince Rachel was Rayson was able to escape through Tannis's villa and make his way safely to Cyrene's forest. However, we have word that Tannis's men have entered the forest in hopes of recapturing the prince. We we've not a moment to waste. Please, O oh King of Hawks, reach out your mighty talons, strike down these wretched humans, and rescue Prince Rayson. I implore you, Your Majesty, take wing at once. Why is Nesala not here? That, er, his highness must not be seen here at this time. It's... What's going on, you old buzzard? King Kilvis is the White Prince's friend, isn't he? Well, how do I put this? Hmm, it's all very complicated. I care not for excuses. If anything happens to race and blood will be spilled. Oh no, please, there's no cause for worry. Duke Tannis treats his works of art with a delicacy so extreme that it could be best- it could best be called abnormal. He would never let any harm befall Prince Rayson. He probably can't even bring himself to touch him. The king himself told me so. That is the only reason he accepted this proposal. Proposal? Uh, um, what I mean is, er... Uh, hold it. You crows set the prince up? S set up? Set up? Oh, no, no. Well, not exactly. Um, please don't hurt me. So that's the truth of it, eh? They all treated Rayson like a piece of merchandise and sold him. To a human. No, that's not... The only one who referred to him as merchandise was Duke Tannis. We never... It doesn't matter. Fleming ignorance does not grant you innocence. You treat a raisin like a trinket in a public market. Oh, dear. If Raisin hadn't escaped on his own, perhaps the Crow King would have rescued him when things cooled down. Regardless, Raisin trusted in his friend and followed him into the trap, and Nezala spit on that friendship. That I cannot forgive. Your assessment of this old bird is correct. I am a worm, nothing more. But please, I beg of you, temper your outrage. Let it cool. You're unbelievable. What is it with you crows, anyway? Everything you do is so dirty and deceptive. Well, we will never understand your ways. Do you hear me, Grey Wings? I hear you well, young hawk. But our nation, our nation has, it has its own issues. Please, this is not the time to yell at a tired old man. You must hurry to Prince Rayson's side. Once he is safe, you can punish me in any way that you see fit. Tear me limb from limb if you wish. But please, go to Prince Rayson, I beg of you. This begging is unseemly and unwanted. We would rescue Rayson regardless of this pathetic show of tears. Return to Kilvis and report these events to your accursed king. Tell him when, the, when this is over, King Tabarn of Phonesis will be paying him a visit. Y yes your highness. <sighs> I know he deserves it, but I still feel bad for badgering the old coot. Your Majesty, what will we do now? Olki, use your ears to pick out the sound of Raisin's wings, then tell me the direction from which it comes. At once. Janif, use your eyes to peer between the trees and find me a road. You got it. Human scum. If you think tw that if you think to replay that knife from twenty years ago, you'll get no quarter from me. Well, isn't this lovely? Mainal Cathedral. Now we're back in Binyan. Hmm? Is that you, Sorn? You're up early. Actually, I'm always awake at this time. Really? Yes, you're the one who's up earlier than normal. I want to finish our mission today. I think my nervous energy woke me up. I understand. The last two days spent searching Cyrene's forest for that heron have been frustrating and fruitless. I'm sure he's in there somewhere, but... I agree. And Duke Tannis's men are still hunting away. They must think that the Heron is there as well. The only place left is the Forest Heart. That's where we should go today. With luck, we might finally locate our target. I get the feeling it's going to be a long day. Oh, I, you have no idea. Alright, battle report. Nephany was the MVP, but she still didn't get any strength! Ah. Yeah, yeah, everyone performed well. That's all. By your leave, I will excuse myself. It's per usual. Alright, so 
I'm gonna manage the people, and I'll do some supports and some info, and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. Uh, got all my units all finished. It should be good. So, uh, just quick, I want to mention last chapter, I missed a couple of chests in the mansion, uh, in the center area. I noticed it in editing, and I just wanted to make note of what was in those chests. Um, in one of them, there was a Draco shield. Not, not too terrible, you know, just a boost in defense, two points, that's not bad. But the other one is something I really would have liked to have gotten, and I can't believe I was stupid and missed it. It was a full guard, which, if given to a unit and equipped... It prevents them from uh, taking damage from things that would do bonus damage to them, like Jill. If I gave it to her, she would not take any extra damage from wind magic or arrows or lightning magic if she's weak to it in this game. I'm not even sure. Um, and, um, where is she? Where's Marsha? Marsha wouldn't take bonus damage uh, from, um, from arrows and wind magic. It, it just, and like, or if I gave it to, um... Uh, where is she? Erky. Which one, one of the two? If I give it to Mordecai, he wouldn't take. He's got smite. If I, he wouldn't take extra damage from fire. Um. So, just just thought I'd mention that because that was stupid of me to miss that. But anyway, let's do some supports. I got one with Soren. Let's go. Hmm. Do you have a second Soren? What is it, Ike? What's wrong? You've been quiet and moody for days. What's going on? Um, well, it's... Yes. It's nothing. You've never worried about who you are, have you? Your family? Where you come from? Who I am? Well, not really. No, I guess I don't understand what you're getting at. I had a father and a mother. I don't remember much about her, but otherwise, no complaints. It must be nice. It must be nice to have loving parents. You need people to experience your childhood, to help shape the person you will become. Without an adult around to affirm and support them, a child can't know which path to take, or who he really is. Don't you have any memory of your parents? No, the woman who raised me was not my birth mother, and she wasn't all that fond of me anyway. My earliest memories of her are saying, Why me? The world isn't fair, or stay away from me, child. No love, no affection. She took care of me out of some sense of duty that she didn't really possess. Stop it, cat! Stop! When I was about four, a nearby sage came by and asked to take me in. He said I possessed rare magical talent. I remember the day clearly. My caretaker was delighted to give me up. In fact, she om she seemed almost delirious with pleasure. Smiling like a mad woman as she handed me over, the sage even gave her gold as compensation. Not that it was necessary. Oh, Soren, I had no idea. The sage was old and knew that death would soon come for him. His only goal was to teach his art to an apprentice. As time was short, he put me through terribly rigorous magic training. We worked day and night, without cease. I didn't even have time to think about who I really was, but it was still a better life than I had ever known. When the sage died two years later, I had acquired much magical, much magical skill, perhaps too much for a child of my age. At any rate, once I had eaten all the sage in the food, all the food in the sage's hovel, nah, all the sage in the food's hovel. Yeah, we're gonna eat sage. We're just gonna eat spices. I left and walked for days to find help. Upon reaching civilization, I came to another grim realization. I couldn't speak. Not a word. Soren. Oh, I could read and write better than most of the villagers, and I can understand what they said. I just couldn't talk. I couldn't help it. The woman and the sage both used to hurl words at me. Unkind words, usually, but I never needed an answer, so... Soren. Huh? Oh, I apologize, Ike. I should not have made you listen to such nonsense. Soren, it's no nonsense. It's awful. It's the most terrible thing I've ever heard. Where did this happen? Was it in Banyan? No, but there's more. I haven't told you about my parents. No, that's enough. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Wait, Soren? Soren! Blast! So maybe there's more to Soren than we thought. Oh good. Uh, Miss with Rolf. Rolf? Hmm. Stop ignoring me. Can we please talk? Please? I don't blame you. I just wanted you to know that. Not everyone we run into is evil. Some of them might just be caught up on the wrong side. So I wasn't thinking about that. Is that what you mean? What? No. We're not finding targets. I know the difference. Targets don't squirm on the ground and gurgle in pain. Targets don't make the grass slippery with blood. 
I learned that lesson the first time I took a man down. They're fighters, just like us. Rolf. But there's a difference. They're trying to hurt the people I love. Anyone that tries that is an enemy of mine. That's why I won't hesitate to feather them. If I even let one of them live, they will do everything they can to kill one of our own. No, I, I'm afraid that of that. I won't stop spilling blood until it's over. Rolf! I don't want you to die. I, I, I don't want to lose anyone else. Uh, I'm sorry, Rolf. I'm so sorry. Uh, I thought you would change. You used to be such a sweet boy. I thought you turned hard and didn't understand about death. I'm sorry. I didn't understand how you felt. You've been so desperate to protect everyone else. This will be over one day. I just want everyone to see that day. Me too, Rolf. Me too. Hold on a second. Cat! Alright, sorry about that. Cat was being obnoxious. Ugh. Oh my gosh. Um, nope. Nothing with Mia. We've also got an A with Mist. Alright, I think this is good. Uh, yeah, this is good. Um, I just got three more people. Alright, so we got Devden, Jill, and Servant. Let's go with Devden. La la la, la la la, hmm? La la, hmm, la, la di, la di di, da di la. Um, hey there, you have a minute? Oh, Captain, how are you today? It's Commander, not Captain. Well, you seem to be enjoying yourself. That's because this garden is so pretty. Devon loves all plants and flowers. How about you, Commander? They're alright, I suppose. That makes Devden rather sad. Alright is not a very strong feeling. It is boring. You should be a more emotional commander. Even things you're used to will show you something new if you look hard enough. And discoveries are exciting. That's what life is all about. At least, that's what Devden thinks. Some degree, and that makes Devden upset. Some disagree, and that makes Devden upset. You may be onto something. In Crimea, when my father was still alive, I think I was more open to such things. But now, I just don't have the time. Honestly, all I can think about is defeating Dayin. I have no energy left to spend on flowers. If you talk like that, you will never defeat Dayin. What did you say? The war is new. If you are already so focused on preparations, you'll wear out before the fighting begins. Hold on a minute. Alright, Jill. Here you are. Hmm. We've been in Benyon for a while now, so tell me something. Why are you still here? Are you pretending to be our friend so that you so you can lance us in the back? You have to understand. I I didn't know anything. I was born and raised in the Talrega region of Dayin. It's a very remote area. My father was a soldier, and I grew up thinking that I, too, would one day be a soldier. A soldier to make my father proud. My life was simple. I questioned nothing. Doubted nothing. Do you know the first thing we were taught in Dayin schools? Subhumans are evil. Subhumans are the enemy. Subhumans must be eradicated. The army stages periodic subhuman hunts. We find refugees from Binyan hiding in our mountains and forests. You participated? You don't get it. That's just how things are in Dayan. No one taught me the word Lagoos. No one taught me that subhumans could be, could be like this. No one cared. When I saw the bird tribes at sea, I was convinced that the teachings were true. They were inhuman monsters. But later, I saw the dragons push your ship off the reef, and it confused me. What if I had been raised to believe a lie? My heart pounded at the thought of it, and my doubts only grew with time. So you decided to remain aboard in order, in order to ascertain the truth. That's your true motive, isn't it? How did you know? I've known a lot of soldiers, and none would ever accept charity from an enemy. It would wound their pride. You obviously have pride to spare, so I knew there was some other factor at play. Oh... Well, have you reached a conclusion? What will you do? I want to stay here. At first, I thought I could protect my old life, that I could prove the subhumans were monsters. But I was wrong, and now things are different. The subhu- I'm sorry, the Lagoos. I want to know the truth about them, and I need to base that on what I see, not what I am told by others. In that case, you can stay as long as you like. I appreciate it. 
I think meeting all of you was a very good thing. So that's nice. And servant. Um, Commander Ike, a priest from Duke Tannis' villa insists on speaking with you. Yes, what is it? Um, Master Mercenary, it is my understanding that you, you pursue Duke Tannis. I hear that you're searching Cyrene's force in hopes of capturing him. And if I am? Duke Tannis' property borders the forest, and he knows much about its layout. For quite some time now, he's been sending men into the forest to look for any herons who may still live there. I see. So you're saying that his troops know the forest well. I, too, have been taken into the forest. You? Why take a priest? He thought the he that herons would make themselves known if a priest called to them. He's also taken dozen of dozens of chaste maidens and tried having them called to the herons as well. But he didn't find any, did he? No, and yet this time, the joy he expressed after paying such an exorbitant exorbitant price for the Syrianese royal was apparent. Apparent? Uh, I think it's apparent. It was not natural. The Duke has gone mad. Do you think that he would dare to defy the Apostle? He is damned. And, and here you stand. You're going to tell me that you remember about th what you remember about the forest, even though it means you're betraying Tannis, right? Hmm, you read me well. To begin with, the heart of the forest was divided into three large sections, maybe more. It was nearly colorless and difficult to see far. The muddy floor pulled at our feet and progress was slow. Many of the soldiers around me were afraid that they didn't bring enough supplies. They said a person would need them if he got lost because getting out again would be no easy task. What can you tell me about Duke Tennis' forces? There were a lot of them. He had soldiers of every type. It was said that his mounted units and magic users were especially powerful. So at the very least, you should be prepared to deal with those two groups. Thank you. My parents, they were both participated in the Cyrenese Massacre. They're nearing the end of their lives, but even now they lie awake at night and beg the goddess for forgiveness. I became a priest in order to help my parents, but then I was assigned to work at Duke Tannis' villa. I knew of his terrible deeds, but his position as an Imperial Senator frightened me. I have been silent for far too long. Ma Master Mercenary, you must rescue the Sir that Cyrenese youth. I beg of you, may the goddess guide your hand. Don't worry, I have no intention of letting that villain steal him from before my very eyes. Alright, so that's that, and I'll be back in a sec, and then we'll save, well, I'm gonna go and save, and uh, after that, I'm gonna, I'll be back, I'll cut up while I'm gone, uh, and we'll uh, start up this very long chapter. Alright, guys, I'm back, so, let's go ahead and end this, and get ready to fight. Alright, Cyrenese Forest. Hmm. I believe this is the place where we ended our search yesterday. I realized something a couple days ago. Even in this forest, you always know exactly where you are, don't you? Hmm? How do you do that? I think it's the lack of color, but these woods are starting to look the same to me. Yes, that's a problem. Ike, we're approaching a large clearing. I think we should have the Apostle and some of the others wait here. Or wait there. Good idea. Even if we find the heron today, there's no need for them to tramp through the forest with us. Hmm. Alright. We're going to head deeper into the forest to continue the search. Please wait here. If we find the heron, we'll send for you immediately. I understand. My Lord Ike, everyone, please be careful. We're counting on you. Sigrun, Tanith, may I entrust the princess to your care? Of course. You've no need to worry. We will protect the we will protect her with our lives. Very well. Until later. All right. So it's foggy. Look at the fog. It's fogalicious. Yay. All right, grill mercenaries, move out. Ugh, yay, fog. <laughs> Gah! Haven't you fools found my precious little bird yet? I've no doubt the poor thing is even now quivering with loneliness and cold. Duke Tennis, I've just received word that the mercenaries who invaded your villa are in this forest. Blast! Those wretches! They're here to steal my bird! Their souls are black with greed and jealousy. 
I have found beauty incarnate, and I will not relinquish it. Only I, Duke Tannis, can appreciate its worth. Uh, that's a bit arrogant. Um, I'm sure that's true, Your Grace, but what about the mercenaries? What should we do about them? Hunt them down like dogs. Leave none. Let none leave this force alive. They will not rob me of my prize. But, Your Grace, they serve at the pleasure of the Apostle herself. Striking them would be... Leave the Apostle to me. I can deal with her once this is finished. All I need from you is silence and obedience. Is that clear? Yes, Your Grace. I beg your pardon. So, that's... bad. There they are. Do as Duke Oliver commanded. Slay them where they stand. Let none leave this forest alive. Not man, woman, or child. I think he said the forest, but whatever. Alright. So. Oh, not the Duke's soldiers again. I think it's about time we put an end to these fools. Listen up, everyone. Let's end this here. Alright, so... Um... Elfire, El Thunder, Longsword, Killer Lance. Gosh dang it. Um... Sniper, Knight, Knight. Uh, just looking at the enemies quick. Get an edge. Poison weapons. The goose bow. It's a good thing I'm not big on using the goose then. Um. All right. So you notice there's an area over here that's just empty, and over here, and over here. This chapter is a four-part chapter. This uh is 17A. Then here's B. Then over here is C, and down here is D. So that's uh, basically how this chapter is going to work. And it's probably going to be quite lengthy, but uh, let's... By the way, just a quick note, by the end of this chapter, you're going to want Ike level 20. Just going to make this known. Um, now I'm going to get my units in position. I really hope Nephany gets some strength if she levels up. That would be great. Um, I also need to start leveling up bulk, but this looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and save. Day breaks. And fight.